Hi, maybe you remember my YouTube short about the hardware donation from Fitech. In today's video, I want to present the Firebird session to you, which I got from Fitech. So here on my camera, you can see the Fireboard, and today we'll take a first look at it. Fitech is a company based in Germany. They are building system on the modules and carrier boards with their system on the modules. So let's check out Fitech's webpage. Therefore, I will go to fitech.eu for the English version. And here we are on the web page. Under products, we can browse their system on the modules and their single board computers. So as I will focus on the Fireboard session today, I will click on single board computers. So today I will present the Fireboard session to you, but I also got the Fireboard Pollux and I will do a separate video about this later. Okay, so here we are on the side of the Fireboard session. So let's take a look around. First here we can see the Fireboard. So it consists of a system on a module and a carrier board on which the system on a module is soldered on. So here we have an ASIC, in this case an NXP Freescale IMX6 Ultralight processor or ASIC, which features an ARM Cortex-A7 single core processor. So this processor isn't the one with the best performance, but it's optimized for a low power consumption. Here we have 512 megabytes of DDR4 RAM available, a 512 megabyte NAND flash, and here you can see we have also an Ethernet file embedded on the system on a module. And I really like this because if I want to, because this if I want to build a product with a system on a module and I want to use Ethernet, all I have to do is I have to get an RJ55 connector and then I can connect the media dependent interface directly from the pins of the system on a module to the RJ55 check without having to integrate an Ethernet file on my own. So this is really cool. The other connections available here on this board, I will show you just in a second. Another cool thing about Fitech is, if you want to download software or manuals, everything is available on the web page. So if I go to downloads here, you can see various sections and documents and software I can download. Here we have hardware manuals, first for the system on a module, but also for the single board computer. I will open this up because I will need it later. Down here we have also the documentation for their Linux SDK. So here for every release of their Yocto Linux mainline kernel version, we can find a board support manual, a Yocto manual, a development environment guide and the release notes. So this is really cool. Here under the SDK we can find the previous releases of the SDKs. The newer releases are delivered as virtual machine images. So here you can download the image of a virtual machine and this virtual machine will already contain all the necessary tools to do the development and to build the Linux image by your own. Okay, and here you can see various other files, for example, yeah, some drawings here, or if you're using Altium, you can directly download the footprints and the symbols for using the system on a module. And okay, so now let's take a look at the hardware manual. Because in here we have a picture where you can see all the available interfaces. Okay, once again, here is our system on a module. And now let's take a look at the interfaces. So this pin header here is our boot mode selection. If this jumper is open, the ASIC will boot from the NAND flash. If we shorten this jumper, it will boot from the SD card interface instead. Okay, so here we have an AV connector for I, I square S and touch. Here we have a connector for a display, 
a connector for UART5 as an RS232 or RS485. We have a USB host connector here, two Ethernet interfaces, a reset and CPU on off switch. We have a loudspeak connector for audio line in and out. We have a CAN connector for the CAN bus. And over this jumper we can set the CAN termination. Here we have a power adapter connector. Because here if you take a look at um, my board here, I have this extension board, which is a power supply. And here I have, just have to connect 12 to 24 watts and this will power the whole single board computer. Okay. And, if, and here we have a battery. And if we take a look at the bottom side of the single board computer, we have a micro SD card slot, we have USB on the go, and we have a connector for a camera. Okay, so much for the interfaces. Now let's boot the board and let's take a look what um, drivers are available, which Linux kernel is up and running, so we also get some information here. Okay, so therefore you can see I have this head here with an RS232 connector. Okay, here I would have preferred a, um, a MUR to USB connector, but this is also okay because this cables you can get quite cheap on the internet, so never mind. Okay, so I will use screen as my serial terminal and I will open up US TTY USB 0. The baud rate is 150,200 here. And of course I have to give it my password because I haven't added my user in the dial out group, but never mind. Okay, so now I will connect the power here. Okay, first interesting thing to mention here is they are not using U-Boot here as their bootloader, they are using Bearbox instead. So Bearbox doesn't have all the features U-Boot have, but is more lightweight and maybe also a little bit faster. But if you want to use U-Boot, you can also find instructions how to build U-Boot in the SDK. Okay, another interesting thing here is, here we can see our NAND flash which is used. So here we have one from Micron and it's 512 megabytes in size. Okay, so much for this. Now let's boot the board by typing in boot here. And I only have to do this because I um, disturbed the auto boot function here. Okay, now we're booting up the Linux kernel. Now system D takes over. Okay, and now we can log in here. Uh, also cool feature here, here we can see the BSP Yocto version, which was used for building the Linux image on this NAND flash. So here it's 21.2, so not the most recent version, but I can update if I want to. Okay, and if I want to log in to, on my board here, I can use the root user and it's a passwordless login. So now I'm logged in. Okay, cool. So now let's check out some specs of the board. First, let's check out the kernel's version. So here I'm running kernel 5.10 and I also get the string of the SDK version, which was used here. And the kernel is compiled for ARM 7 l which makes sense because we have, uh, we have here a Cortex-A7 processor, which is ARM 7 here. Okay, so now let's take a look at the free and available RAM. So in total we have about 500 megabytes of RAM and in idle 24 megabytes are used. So this is really okay. This is really good. Okay, what else can we check? Under CPU info, we can find information about our CPU. So we just have a single core processor here, ARM47. And here we have the information we're using an NXP Freescale IMX6 ultralight chip here. And these are the features which are enabled. So once again, it's not the most performant processor, but it's optimized for low power consumption. Okay, let's see which GPIO um, interfaces are available. So we have five GPIO chips detected here. 
And if I use I2C detect, I can see the available I2C interfaces. And you can see here, yeah, I have um, one I2C interface available over I2C device. I think the other I2C interfaces are already in use by some other drivers. So just one interface shows up here. Okay, let's take a look at the network interfaces. So here we have our CAN bus and our two Ethernet connections. Let's run an I2C detect on bus number zero. Here we can see some devices are available on the bus. This device here is the um, GPIO expander I connected here and if I disconnect it and rerun the command again, you can see this is gone. So we have successfully accessed the I2C bus. We have some other devices here which are on the module or on the single board computer too and some are also occupied by a driver. Okay, so here on this board you can see two onboard LEDs. So yeah, here I'm at the end of the video, let's toggle these LEDs. Therefore, I will navigate into this class LEDs. And here you can see we have various LEDs available, for one for the SD card interface. This is an LED embedded on the system on a module, which generate the heartbeats. And here we have two user LEDs. So, and if we take a look here, over this brightness file, we can set and unset the LEDs. So if I write a zero to user LED one brightness, the LED will be turned off. Or if I write a zero to it, and if I write a one to it, the LED will be on again. Okay, cool. So this was a first brief um, presentation of the Fibre session. And I'm really looking forward to develop Linux applications on this board and to use the SDK. So I guess that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. In case you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee on buymycoffee.com slash Johannes for Linux. So thanks for watching and goodbye.